Well, good morning and welcome. It's good to see everybody. God bless you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. We like to begin with a special time for our kids. So church, help me sing our kids down. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, and I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, but it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. We're building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so high, you can't get over it so low. Can't get under it so wide. You can't get around it, you have to go in at the door. We're building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so, you can't get over it so. You can't get under it so. You can't get around it, you have to go in at the door. Well, in just a moment, we're going to have to introduce a baby and celebrate that baby's birthday. But before we do it, lots of people have birthdays today. I'm going to point out one person. It's a person that works in our office and one of our administrative assistants. If you call, you talk to this person, it's Lisa Huey. It's her birthday today. There's numbers four and six involved in it. I, you can figure out the consequences of the orders, but I highly recommend you don't go with the six first. But happy birthday, Lisa. We appreciate you. And we get to meet a new baby. Come on up here. Jared and Bethany. And there goes Jace, two years old. He runs everywhere. Sophia, where are you, Sophia? Over here. Hey, Sophia. Why do we show off? Right there. Is that your baby? What's the? Wh whoops. What's the name of your baby? Drew. It's what? Drew. Drew. That's right. Hey, is that your baby brother? Is that, what's the name of your baby brother? Baby. Drew. Drew? Are you excited that I'm here talking to you? Do you look like this when Randy's preaching? <laughs> Love you, Randy. You need to see that face. Uh, it's only when I preach that I get that face. Hey, it's good to see you. And you're such a good big sister, and he's a good big brother, and we love little uh, Drew. Uh, big sister Sophia, four years old. Brother Jay's two years old. Grandparents Paula and Belinda Cowdery. Lots of cousins and aunts here, too. Oh, and what a beautiful little boy, born January 2nd. Seven pounds, ten ounces. All right, let's gather up. We're going to say a special prayer for your brother, okay? God, we continue to pray for Drew. You've answered our prayers to this point, and we're so thankful for his life. Would you continue to be with him, with him and help him grow and become the person you made him to be? Father, thank you so much for, the, for this family and, and all they mean to all of us. And may we join them on this journey in such a way as to be a blessing in his life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. As together we all say... Amen. Yeah, let us know about it, bud. Yeah, he's talking up here. Isn't he cute? Oh, my goodness. He's cute just like you're cute. Cute like I'm cute? No. Cute like you're cute. And he's going to grow up, and you're going to be good examples for him. We're thrilled that each of you are here. See everybody out there? They think you're handsome and beautiful, so they're smiling at you. Smile back and give them a wave. Wave over here at our college kids and everybody up top in our youth group. Oh. All right, let's go back and sit with our family and friends, and we'll sing about how good God is. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. 
Good morning. Welcome to the Edmund Church of Christ. We are so thankful you're here today. Those of you joining us online, we welcome you. It's good to be together. It's good to have the purpose we have for bringing us together, and that is to worship God. So it is good that you are here this morning. There's the QR code. If you don't mind, just take a moment to check in. Whether you're a member of this church or you are a guest today, whether you are in person or online, just please take a moment. This helps us keep track of each other and follow up with each other and know who is here. And so if you have a smartphone, take out that phone, open up that camera, hold it up there to that QR code. It'll give you a link. Click on that link. Answer a couple of quick questions. One of those questions is going to be, do you plan to be a part of the dinner portion of Sunday Night for the Master tonight? If you could answer that, that helps those who are preparing the food for this evening's activities. We want you to be a part of any and all of that tonight if you want to, but please indicate that. Also, if you have prayer requests, you can jot those down on that little form, and we'd be happy to honor those requests and lift you up uh, in praise or in request to God as you... uh, let us know what's going on in your life. But we are so thankful you're here today. If you got in here without communion, we use the little packets. If you need communion this morning, we have some of those available. Just raise your hand and someone will see you and make sure you get one of those. If you need communion this morning, uh, just keep your hand up until they see you. They'll make sure you get that. Here's one over here in the balcony. Caleb, there you go. Thanks. And again, to our guests, we are so thankful you're here. We know that Oklahoma Christian had a lot of activities this past weekend, and everybody's awake and doing well, right? All right, very good. So maybe parents and family came in for those activities. If that's what brings you here this morning, we're glad you're here. Affirming the Faith was out at North MacArthur. If that's what brings you here this morning, we're glad you're here. If someone invited you, we're glad you're here. Or if you are new to the community, or maybe you've been thinking, I need to get back to church, or I need to go to church, and today is the day that you're here, we are thankful that you are here this morning. It is good to be together. If you are a first-time guest, go by our Welcome Center. They have a special gift for you. They just want to greet you and say hi. Also, if you need information or have questions about the Edmund Church of Christ, they'd be happy to help you out. Well, last Friday, you may not even have noticed this yet, depending on where you parked this morning, last Friday, they installed the bridge... The new bridge to Angel Park. Look at this footage. We've got some great drone footage of this bridge being installed. Look at that thing. It was massive. So they rolled that big thing into the parking lot, had that huge crane ready to go, connected to that bridge, and they lifted it up. They threaded the needle, more or less, (laughs) and put it in place there in Angel Park. They got rid of the old bridge. So they... uh, That's pretty amazing, isn't it? They put that bridge in, and you can kind of see, maybe in the background there and in this next shot, you can see that the frame of the pavilion is already up. There's gravel down where the foundation will go. There's gravel down where the sidewalk will go, as you can see there, and those hopefully will be poured this week. So progress is being made. It's exciting to see what's happening over there. And let me just remind you, this whole dream, this whole vision that God has shared with us in many ways, we feel like, is to use this space not only to bless this congregation, it certainly will do that, but for it to be a blessing to our community, to our neighbors. And so right now, we have a group who has been meeting and will continue to meet and talk and brainstorm and pray about specific ways that we can reach our neighbors with Angel Park, this great outdoor space. And let me just also remind you that all of this is being built debt-free because of your generosity. We don't want to go into debt for this project. And that's not our plan, and we're not going to do that. And so as more funds come in, we'll continue to add to that area and enhance that area, which is exciting to see. And I'm so curious to see what God has in store for us, probably things that we don't even know about or dream about, because remember, he can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Well, it is good to be together this morning, and we're glad you're here. Let's worship this morning with all of our hearts as we praise God, as we commune together. As we open up the word of God, as we pray, as we give, as we allow God to shape our thinking, our hearts, our lives, so that we can bear fruit that lasts as we remain connected to him. If you don't mind, let's stand together. We're going to begin by reading out loud from Psalm 100, verse 4. Let's read this as a congregational reading of one voice, and then we'll worship together. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, 
and praise his name. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his porch with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. bow with me. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here today to worship and glorify your name. Thank you for helping us through this week and to bring us back here. We've been busy, we've been tired, but you still allowed us to come today. Uh, bless us and remind us of all of what we have through your name and uh, help us to use the gifts that you have blessed us with. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you are
Good morning. It is great to be here this morning, worshiping our Lord, seeing everyone here, bright sunny day. Uh, our current sermon series, and as shown on this wall of greenery behind me, reflect on being, uh, us being connected uh, as Christians, connected to God, uh, our, the fruit that we bear. Randy will be bringing us a lesson this morning, uh, taking a, a look at that. But uh, it's also about being connected as Christians. As we gather around the communion table this morning, uh, it's not just as individuals, but as a connected community, connected by our united faith in Christ. Uh, around the world, actually, people are partaking of the same communion, uh, some at this exact time. Uh, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians reminds us of the importance of unity and being connected within the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17, he writes, Because there is one loaf, we are many. We are one body, for we all share one loaf. Simple act of partaking of the bread should be a reminder of our unity in Christ and with one another. And just as we break bread, the bread is broken, uh, it should remind us that we're called to break down the, the barrier, set aside the things that break us apart from our relationship with God and our relationship with other, and fully embrace the unity that we have in Christ. And while we reflect on the unity and connectedness uh, that communion brings, um, it is a time for remembrance. Uh, Jesus, uh, the night before uh, he was crucified, uh, had a dinner. And in Luke 22, verse 19, we read, He took bread, he gave thanks, and broke it, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. So we're gathered around to remember Christ, remember that sacrifice that was made and the love of that sacrifice. So as we partake of the bread this morning, let's remember that sacrifice that Christ made and more importantly, the love that compelled him to lay down his life for our salvation. We join me in prayer for the bread. Dearly Father, we come to you this morning. We are, we are happy to be here. We are happy to worship you, and we're thankful. We're thankful for all that you do for us. We're thankful uh, right now for the, the love behind the sacrifice that was made, and Jesus laying down his life uh, so that we uh, could live. Lord, as we partake of this bread, help us to not only uh, remember uh, the sacrifice that was made, but the victory that we have uh, through Christ. And it's in Jesus' most holy name that we pray. Amen. As we partake of the cup, let us remember the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 25 reads, in, that, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the, cup, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, the, the seemingly simple act of partaking of this cup uh, uh, stands for a lot more. As we partake of it, let's remember and affirm our gratitude for the, the grace and the love that he poured out, out for us through Christ's sacrifice. So let's pray for the cup. Dearly Father, we continue our prayer this morning. And we're thankful for um, the blood that was shed, uh, the perfect blood that was shed on our behalf uh, as imperfect uh, sinners, um, that uh, we were made clean by Christ's sacrifice. We're thankful for that sacrifice. We're thankful for your love, thankful to be your children. 
and it's in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. We are also this morning connected through our giving. Uh, we've taken this time to focus on giving back, um, seeing the video of all the, the work going on in, in Angel Park, and, and, and Randy really hit the, the point. Uh, that's something we're doing for our community. That's something we're doing to hopefully bring others to Christ. Uh, you see the flags on the walls. Um, we'll be talking a little more about this later, but uh, next Sunday's Commission Sunday. But each week as we uh, give back to the Lord, that uh, those funds are used to, to further his work, to grow his kingdom, and to, to shine the, the light, the, the love of Christ to others. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, we read, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. To give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a, a cheerful giver. Let's keep that as mine as we consider a gift back this morning, and let's join us. Join me in prayer, dearly Father. We come to this morning, and we are thankful for all the things that you do for us. We're we're more thankful for the work that you do through us. Please help us to continue to be. Uh, your light in, in a dark world. Help us to reach out to our community and to lost souls both near and far. To show them the light of your love and to, to pull them closer to you and uh, bring them into your family. We ask you to be with the, the, the funds that are contributed this morning that they may be used in the best way to, to achieve that goal. And all that we do, giving you the praise and the glory which you so richly deserve. Uh, we're thankful for many things. We're mostly thankful for Jesus, and it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame,
scripture reading for today's uh, lesson is going to be Galatians 5, 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. We want to invite our kids to go to Children's Bible Hour and other activities at this time. Uh, would you please stand? And if you're going to these, you can exit through the back. And all of these uh, activities are in our children's wing, straight back down. I stand to praise you, but I In a time of growing isolation and individualism, we are reminded of how important it is to stay connected to God and to each other. Jesus gave us a meaningful metaphor to help make the point. I am the vine and you are the branches, Jesus declared. Jesus calls us into a life of connection before production, a life rooted in genuine love, a life that yields fruit that lasts as we abide in him. As we continue to say we are connected to Christ. He said, I am the true vine, you are the branches. And he continually had this appeal that we should remain in him, abide in him, make ourselves at home with him, stay connected to him. And it's through that connection to Jesus that we are also connected to each other. And as Jim said, not just us in this room, but us as the body of Christ all over the world. And as we remain connected to him, and through that connection to each other, we, like any living thing, continue to grow and develop. <clears throat> and with that growth and development comes fruit. We bear fruit in our lives. That fruit is so important because a part of the purpose of that fruit is to draw people to the source of life to which we are connected, and that is Jesus. As we think about our connection to each other, the unity that we share, the connectedness, you might say, that then becomes a witness to a watching world. In fact, in John 17, Jesus prayed to his heavenly Father, make them one, just as we are one. And through that oneness, he said, so the world may believe. You see, our connectedness becomes a testimony to a divided world about the unity that we can have in Christ. As was mentioned, next Sunday is Commission Sunday. You see the flags on either side. It's such an important day for this church family because we value mission work. We value our mission to go and make disciples all over the world. It's important to us. We want that to be not just a part of us, but our identity. We want to be disciple makers. And so next Sunday, on Commission Sunday, one of the things that we do is we call attention to what God is doing around the world through missions, through the missionaries we support, 
the mission projects that we have, and the mission trips that we send out. And it's so great to see more and more mission trips kind of coming back online after COVID and after the pandemic. Exciting things are happening, and God is doing so much around the world, and he's using us. And so another part of Commission Sunday is not just to see what God is doing, but it is to join God, to be a part of what God is doing, to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves, something that truly matters, the business of the kingdom of heaven. And so we each one will be challenged to give sacrificially, to support our missionaries, to make those mission projects possible, to send people on mission trips. It's such an important part of who we are and what we do. So as we think about next Sunday, as sort of a preview and, I guess, promo, watch this short video. Hours before Jesus was crucified, he prayed for us. I pray also for those who will believe me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. May we be one. May we be unified. May we truly be connected, so the world will believe, and the borders of God's kingdom expand. When our fears of the future paralyze us, when our strongest opinions blind us to love, may we be one, so the world will believe. When we find ourselves divided by politics and preferences, when we can't see beyond our own broken stories, may we be one, so the world will believe. May our passion be tempered by kindness. May our vision be marked by surrender. May our mission be fueled by love. And when our eyes get blurred and our focus turns inward, may we look outside ourselves to see Jesus, to see others, to see the world. May we be one so the world will believe and the borders of God's kingdom expand. Let's pause in this moment and pray about Commission Sunday. Join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for so much. God, you are a good God who pours your blessings, your forgiveness, your mercy out on us. We are so undeserving. We live sinful lives. We do things that don't honor you. And Father, you and the precious blood of your son cover us, forgive us, and we're thankful. And because that is such good news, we want to not only receive it and embrace it, but to share it with others. So Father, help us do that. Give us the words, the voice, the message. Give us the courage, the faith, the ability, the opportunity. And Father, much of what we do in that area throughout the world is done through our missionaries and mission projects and mission trips. So Father, we lift those things up and those people up to you, the men and women on the front lines, Father, those activities that are taking place all around this world, even right now, to give you glory, to share your gospel, to advance the borders of your kingdom. Father, our prayer is that we can be a part of that, that we can be connected to you, connected to each other, and that our unity, our oneness, would bear witness to you and to your goodness and to the unity you have with the Heavenly Father and through the Spirit that works in our lives. So, Father, we pray that you would continue to use us. We humbly ask your blessings and guidance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible in front of you, if you'd like to follow along, you might open it up to John chapter 15. John is not too long after the New Testament starts, if you're somewhat new to the Bible. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 15. And then you might also want to put a marker in Galatians 5. Galatians 5 is a little bit later in the New Testament. John 15 and Galatians chapter 5. If you're like me, I like to have it in front of me so I can kind of see things myself and the context and that kind of thing. So we'll be in those two places. You know the saying, you can't judge a book by its cover, right? Well, evidently, you can't necessarily judge a mouse by her costume. Look at this picture, someone catching Minnie Mouse on a break. I've shown this picture to a couple of groups recently and they have the same response, sort of Surprise and disappointment. <laughs> I'm glad many of our children are in Bible hour, right? Because this could be traumatic. This could be traumatic. What do you mean Minnie Mouse is a dude? <laughs> and he smokes? Really? Uh, yeah. You know, things aren't always as they seem, are they? Things aren't always as they seem, as they appear. And you know that is true about your life. 
I know that's true about my life. Because what do we like to do? We like to wear masks. We like to put on costumes. We don't call them that, but we put an image out there. We portray a persona. And we want people to see us a certain way. We put veneers up. We keep people at arm's length. We try to control what they think of us because we're concerned about what they think of us. And sometimes what's on the inside isn't the same as what's on the outside. But here's what happens. Ultimately, that is revealed. Because ultimately, what is on the inside reveals itself on the outside. And maybe it takes time. And maybe it takes hardship. Maybe it takes being backed into a corner. But sooner or later, the real self emerges. And our true hearts are revealed. And the things that we value, the things that we hold as most important, become very evident by what we do, by what we say, by the decisions we make, by the way we treat people. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7, By their fruit you will recognize them. You will know them, some versions say. By the fruit of their lives, you will see a glimpse. You will have a glimpse into the person's heart. You'll know what they are about by how they live, by the fruit that their lives pursue and produce. You see, what's happening on the inside will eventually make it to the outside. I think life is a process of bearing fruit, isn't it? Life is a process of bearing fruit, and we are, we are either bearing the fruit that is about self-gratification, that is about the things that the world says are most important, so we pursue those things. The world sends us this message, and it resonates somewhere inside of us that if you can do this, or have this, or accomplish this, or be about this, then you will be happy, and that sounds reasonable, and so we pour ourselves into those things. And the fruit of our lives then gives evidence to our priorities and our values. And so we are either producing that type of fruit or we are truly connected to Christ. And we are letting the love of Christ flow through us like lifeblood, through the vine, through the branches as we are connected together. And then that love then produces fruit in our lives, the power, the life-giving power from our connection to Christ produces fruit in our lives, the fruit of the Spirit. So it's either fruit that perishes or fruit that persists. One of those enduring, lasting fruits is certainly love. And Jesus in John chapter 15 spends a lot of time talking about love. And he doesn't just teach us saying this is what love is. We know, and you know, if you know anything about Jesus, that he lives it out. That even his death confirms what true love is. He says, greater love has no one than to lay down your life, to give up your life, to surrender your life to your friends. And then he says, you are my friends. He goes on to tell his disciples that he's chosen them. This is what he says in verse 16 of John 15. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Now maybe as we were reading that, you sort of perked up at that phrase, give you whatever you ask for. You're thinking, there it is. There's the formula I've been looking for my whole life. I've had so many prayers that seem to fall on deaf ears in heaven. And now I know how I can have my prayers answered. I don't think Jesus is offering a formula to have constantly answered prayers. I think what he's saying here is, stay so connected to me, so much at the center of the will of God, that you will ask for the things that align with the will of God, and God will happily provide those for you, accomplishing his will in you and through you. I think he's saying, stay so connected to me, that all you say and all you do is said and done in the name of Jesus. I think he's saying, Sto say, stay so connected to me that you love other people as I love you. Stay so connected to me that you bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Fruit that means something. 
It's important for us probably to define what we talk about when we talk about fruit. In this context, fruit is referring to the evidence and the expression of the nature of Christ in us. I like that definition. This fruit that lasts, it is the evidence and the expression of the nature of Christ in us. It's what's on the inside coming out on the outside. And what's on the inside is a deep connection to Jesus. And to the work of the Holy Spirit, transforming us more and more into the image of God's Son. And all of that is happening on the inside. It can't help to bear fruit and evidence, expression of what is happening on the inside. And Jesus points out a couple of things about this fruit. First of all, he says, it is rooted in love. In these nine verses, Jesus mentions love nine times. This whole teaching is really about love. Yes, he's talking about the vine and the branches and staying connected to him. But the connective theme throughout all of it is love. His love for us, our love for him, our love for for others. It's all about love. And we cannot claim to be connected to Christ and ignore or dismiss his appeal to love. I think it's safe to say that if someone doesn't love well, then we might question their connection connection to Christ are they fully connected to Jesus because if you're truly connected to Christ the outward fruit of your life will be rooted in love to say it a different way the way you live reveals who you love most isn't that true you know that's true in your human relationships isn't that true in the sense of how we relate to God How you live reveals who you love most. And so Jesus says you will bear this fruit that lasts. And so it's rooted in love, but too, as we just said, it is everlasting. It is permanent. It is enduring. It's not temporary. It's not short-lived. It's not the things that we often pursue in this life and that ultimately our lives are about producing. No, those things don't last. Those things aren't eternal. Those things are valued in this world that itself doesn't last. Jesus says, that's not what I've chosen you for. I've appointed you. I've chosen you to bear fruit that will last, that will endure, that is permanent, that is eternal. Maybe an example would be helpful. What kind of fruit are we talking about? What does it mean? What does a life look like that is fully connected to the vine, to the true vine, Jesus. What does that look like? Well, Scripture gives us an answer. Now go over to Galatians 5. In Galatians 5, the Apostle Paul explains what a life connected to Christ looks like. It is a life of freedom from the law, but fueled by the love of Christ. And just as Jesus emphasized in John 15, love, Paul here in Galatians 5 emphasizes love he says serve one another in love love your neighbor as yourself and then he contrasts this life as he says is led by the spirit lived by the spirit versus the life that is lived for the flesh life that is truly connected to the source of life Jesus the true vine versus life that is lived for one's own pleasure one's own glory one's own recognition the things of the world maybe connected to the world maybe connected to my truth, maybe connected to my plans and dreams to be happy and successful and wealthy or whatever it may be. You see, those are two very different connections and they produce two very different results. So notice what Paul says as he contrasts these two ways of life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Obviously, Paul is dealing here with some Christians who are trying to promote legalism, trying to find self-righteousness by keeping 
the law. And Paul comes in and he releases them from that burden. And he says to surrender your life to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Stop trying to control everything. Stop trying to portray this image to the people around you, even to God, that you are righteous, that you are good, and just surrender your life to the Spirit. He says if you don't do that, here's what your life will look like. If you choose to stay connected to self or the world, if you choose to disconnect or sever your relationship to Christ to the freedom you have in Christ, to the love of Christ, to the power of his spirit. Here's what your life will look like. And if you have your Bibles open, you can read right there. He says, it looks like this, sexual immorality and lust, impurity, idol worship, or we might contextualize that as materialism, hatred, causing divisions, hostility, jealousy, angry outbursts, Selfish ambition, envy, being drunk, and on and on. This life of indulgence and excess. And so he explains that these are not the things of the Spirit. These things don't belong in the kingdom of God. These are not the fruits of a life that is truly connected to Christ. But then he continues. What about a life that is connected to Jesus? What about a life that is abiding in Christ. He says in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ, I like that phrase, those who belong to Christ, those who are with Christ, abide in Christ, make themselves At home with Christ, what about them? This Jesus who was crucified, who has crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, that's what they have done. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit as well. Did you notice, at least in our English translations, he uses a couple of different phrases there. He says, walk by the Spirit. He says, led by the Spirit. And he says, live by the Spirit. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap there, but I like the nuance. As you walk through life, as you walk through decisions, as you walk through your daily routines, is the Spirit leading you, guiding you? Are you led by the Spirit through tough times, through grief, through loss, through decisions? And is your life a life that is characterized by simply walking with the Spirit? Keeping in step, some versions say, with the Spirit. And what he says is, if you walk by the Spirit, if you're led by the Spirit, if you live by the Spirit, then you know what your life will produce? The fruit of the Spirit. What is that fruit? He says, it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Scholars have analyzed this list and they said, you know, there's some themes going on there the first three seem to do seem to have something to do with our relationship or our connection to God God bears those fruits in our lives love joy and peace and the second batch really has to do with our connection our relationship to other people yes sometimes we have to be patient with objects right computers and phones and other things cars Truly, patience is about how we connect with other people. Kindness and goodness. And then the third trio there has to do with our connection to our inner self. What's on the inside? Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He says these are the things that last. These are the things that endure. These are the things that make a real difference in this world that mean something. Fruit that is valued in eternity. And before you simply dismiss this list as simply, oh, those are some nice little character traits that we teach our children with little fruity songs, you know. Fruit of the Spirit's not a banana, it's a what? Something like that. I don't know. There's some kind of children's song like that. Before you dismiss these as just simple little characteristics or traits that we should teach our children. Let me just ask you to to step back 
and evaluate yourself in these areas. And don't evaluate yourself in comparison to someone else, especially someone else who you consider yourself morally superior to. But compare yourself with how Jesus modeled these things. How is Jesus loving? How is he patient? What kind of peace did he have and bring to others? All of those things. I think it's so easy just to say, well, that's a nice little list. It makes for good singing and good charts and memory, memorization for the children. But the Bible says this is what your life will look like. These are the things that will be expressed in your life. This is the fruit, the expression, and the evidence of the nature of Christ in you. You see, a life connected to Jesus and rooted in his love will produce the fruit of the Spirit. If you don't think this type of fruit is what your life is producing, maybe it's time to make some changes. Maybe it's time to reevaluate. Maybe it's time to confess or repent, or maybe it's time to seek support or help, or maybe it's just time to turn things around. But see, so often what we do, sometimes when we're convicted, sometimes when the light bulb goes off, we say, okay, i got to make some changes, so here's what I'll do. I'll just try harder. I'll try to be more patient. I'll try to be more loving. I'll try to be better. And so we depend on ourselves or probably in some of our darker moments we simply make cosmetic changes we put up a facade we put on that mask we want to appear to be patient or loving or kind or faithful or good and so we make changes on the outside but we never really address the inside do you remember what we said earlier eventually whatever's on the inside will be revealed on the outside. I heard this illustration one day, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Let's say that I have a big apple tree in my backyard. And season after season after season, this apple tree produces not beautiful, juicy, good apples, but rather dry and wrinkly and mushy apples. Season after season. And one day my wife says, what is the deal with that tree? This doesn't make sense. Why do we have a big apple tree out there if we can never enjoy a harvest of apples? Is there anything you can do? And then a few days later, she's standing at the window. and She looks outside and she sees me. And I'm going into the backyard and I have a ladder and some tree trimmers. And I have a big staple gun. And I have two bushels of beautiful apples. You can see where this is going. And as she watches me, I set up that ladder and I begin to cut down all of those old, mushy, dry, wrinkled, rotten apples. They fall to the ground and I push them away. And then I climb back up that ladder and I take my staple gun and I start picking one apple after the other out of that bushel and I staple them to all of those branches, every branch. By the way, at first service, I didn't think to tell security that I'm going to be up there firing a staple gun, so if you hear something, don't be alarmed. I gave him the heads up at second service. So I go through the whole tree, and I'm stapling all these beautiful apples everywhere on these branches. What's going to happen? Well, after a while, I'm going to step back, And I'm going to look at that tree and think, that's a beautiful apple tree. Look at all those beautiful apples. And from a distance, it's going to look beautiful. And it's going to have all these wonderful, juicy, red apples on it. Problem solved, right? But what is my wife, who is watching me through the window, going to think? He's lost it. Yep, knew it was going to happen. It finally happened. He's cracked. Why? Because that's no solution. That's not going to do anything. If an apple tree produces fruit that isn't good, there's something wrong internally. There's something wrong with the system. There's something wrong with the roots. There's something wrong inside. 
And I can spend all day stapling beautiful apples on the outside, but it's not going to make a difference. And plus, what's going to happen to these apples? It's not going to be long until they start rotting, right? So they, they start turning brown and wrinkled and get mushy. Why? Because they aren't connected to the source of life. They aren't really connected. They appear to be connected. There's a facade. There is a veneer. There is an image that says they're connected. But as you get more, as you get closer and you tend to investigate a little bit more, you see, no, that's, that's, there's no connection there. And without that connection, these will not thrive. And then next season, what's going to happen? Just because I stapled a bunch of good apples on a tree, can I expect next season that, voila, the tree will produce wonderful, beautiful apples? Of course not. It doesn't work that way. If what's on the inside remains unchanged, it will never produce good apples on the outside. How often do we approach change in our lives that way? How often do we evaluate the fruit of our lives that way? We know things aren't as they should be, and so we make superficial changes, cosmetic changes. We fruit staple. Everyone around us, from a distance, it looks like, man, that person has it together. That couple, man, they have a great marriage. Look at that family. They're perfect. And that makes us happy. But we know inside something else is happening. If the inside remains unchanged, the fruit on the outside will not bear witness to the nature of Christ. It will not last. And Jesus said, I have chosen you, I have appointed you, I have given you this purpose to bear fruit that will last. Well, what is that? It's love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness, and self-control, and many other things that reflect the true nature of Christ and the work of the Spirit inside us to conform us to the image of Christ. You see, bearing fruit, it's not about trying harder. It's not about greater resolve. It is about greater surrender. That's why Paul says, be led by the Spirit. When you allow yourself to be led by someone else, you are giving up control. You're giving up the reins. You're giving up the steering wheel. Do you know some people who, if you go somewhere in a car, they always have to drive? Some people are like that. And it's hard for them to, to give up that, I don't know, control, or maybe they're just, they've seen you drive before, so they're like, no, I'll, I'll take this one, right? Something to be said for that. When you get out of the driver's seat, you're saying, I give up control. Someone else drive, someone else lead, someone else take me there. And Paul says, live your life being led by the Spirit. Let him drive. Let him take control. Well, that means you have to surrender. You have to yield. You have to let go. Let go and let God work in your heart and in your life. And the fruit of that transformation from the inside out will be evident not only to you, to others, but to a watching world. So as we close, let me just ask you, what type of fruit are you producing? Be honest with yourself. What type of fruit fruit are you producing? Are you stapling apples? And it looks good for a while, but you know there is little substance there. There's changes that need to happen on the inside. Are you bearing the fruit of a life that is lived for self and for pleasure, selfishness, the things of the world, happiness, accumulation of wealth, success? Or are you bearing the fruit of the Spirit, the things that really matter, the things that change lives, the things that change families, that change the world? Are you allowing the evidence and the expression of the nature of Christ to show in your life? If not, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to make some changes. If we can help you do that, let us do that. If we can encourage you, pray for you, support you, let us do that. In just a moment, a couple of our shepherds and their wives will be in a parlor. 
It's a room right off the hallway behind me. You can go out the back. You don't have to come up here, but you can if you want. Go right out that door. You'll see that room there. They'd be happy to encourage you, to pray for you. They're going to pray anyway, and so they'd love to pray for you. Or you can come down to the front, and we will support you and pray for you. Maybe today you're ready to surrender all, surrender everything, give your life to Christ, be baptized into Christ. You know, we, we sometimes say when someone is baptized, you are dying to self. And think about the act of baptism. You are dying to self. You're letting go of that connection because you want to be connected to Christ and you're being buried in the water. And just as God raised Jesus back to life, God is raising you to live a new life, a new creation connected to him, bearing the fruit of his spirit. That can be yours today. If there's something we can do, we invite you to come as we stand and sing. Let's stand. I have found here love and mercy from an Let's pray. Uh, Dear Father, uh, we thank you that once again, like every week, we're able to gather here as believers, uh, united uh, in you under Christ, and uh, we thank you that we have so many blessings uh, here in Edmond, and uh, we just thank you for all that you do, and uh, we ask that you be with us, help us to bear fruit in all that we do, uh, bear genuine fruit, and uh, help us to work by the Spirit, and uh, let it work through us, and Uh, Let Christ be evident in our lives to those around us, to the community around us. Uh, We ask that you be with those in our community that are sick or suffering and uh, be with us through all the stress of our busy lives and help us find uh, peace that we can only find in you. Um, God, we ask that you be with us in just each and every moment of this next week, and uh, we thank you uh, for all that you've done for us. Most of all, we thank you for your son. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, good morning. Thank you guys for worshiping with us today. Uh, We're thankful to have those of you that are joining online as well. If you didn't get a chance to scan the QR code earlier, it is right behind me. It's also at the bottom of the first page of our church app. 
Uh, if you're visiting with us today, if you're uh, visiting family or for the first time, we're so, so thankful to have you here, thankful to have um, members of your family here or whatever it may be, just thankful that you're worshiping with us and part of our group today. Uh, our sympathies today go out to Kevin Johnson in the death of his grandmother and also Jim Robinson in the death of his sister. As Randy mentioned earlier, Commission Sunday is next week. We're looking forward to that. It's such a uh, great time of energy and excitement and just being able to see what God is doing uh, outside of these walls and in the world. And um, a big part of that is our children. And so uh, they are always on a mission. And so we get to see that every Commission Sunday that they come up. We'll have the wagons out here and they can uh, donate money and we can just be encouraged by their hearts and be able to see a great example uh, through our children. Tonight, uh, Sunday night for the Master, we'll be having a meal uh, tonight at 5. It's uh, breakfast for dinner, so it's a big one. Everybody loves breakfast for dinner. And then uh, at 5.30, we'll have a short devotional. And at 6, we'll have various activities around the building. One of those activities is The Chosen. Uh, if you've seen that, it's, uh, it's really powerful. And so we'll have that as one of our options, as well as some different shared experiences uh, which are always great times to just get together with other people that enjoy similar things as you and be able to build relationships with one another. We'll also have uh, several of our number out there in the foyer doing children's ministry projects. And tonight, uh, that's going to be stuffing uh, Easter eggs with candy. So that's a lot of fun. We'll need a lot of help uh, doing that, I'm sure. If you haven't got a chance to fill out a ministry involvement form yet, uh, we would love if you would do that soon. There's some boxes in the foyer. There's also a QR code in the bulletin. But it's just so helpful for our ministry leaders to be able to see um, people that are, are willing and able to help uh, in different ministries. And it's just a blessing to our church that everyone has a place and is able to find a ministry for them. We also have a praise and game night coming up this Thursday for our young adults, uh, 20s and 30s, um, any stage of life that you're in. Uh, I'm sure you can kind of fit in there, uh, but it's such a blessing to be together with, with that group and be encouraged by that group. That's at 6.30 Thursday night. They'll be doing a lot of uh, fun things as well as uh, spending time in worship to God, uh, which will be a blessing. We're so thankful that you're here. We look forward to the rest of your day. Hopefully it goes well, and uh, we're just thankful that you were, you were here and we were all able to, to worship God together. We just remember you are sent. <laughs>